Liz, thanks for joining us in Barcelona this year. Absolutely. What are the big game changers in the mobile automotive or the connected car business? Well, uh, wow, a, there's a lot. I would say the biggest one right now is what Google's trying to do with the OAA, the Open Automotive Alliance. They're, if you remember back in the days of pre-Android handsets, the first thing Google did was they bought Android quietly, stealthily, and then they launched the OHA, the Open Handset Alliance. So they recently announced the OAA. The car manufacturers are starting to look, you know, there's a lot of real estate in the dash, especially if you look at the very large Tesla dash, which is basically a double-sized tablet that real estate and internet connectivity that's available to the driver, to the passengers, to the car manufacturers, to the carriers. So that's, that real estate hasn't been settled yet. So tell us about your role with Autotech and what some of the goals and objectives of the organization are. Well, it's pretty simple. There are several OEMs and tier one vendors from the auto side who are in Silicon Valley looking for innovation. And the Autotech Council is one of the tools that they use. They, uh, we bring, we probably look at about 200 auto-related tech technology startups each year. And the vendors may have interest in working specifically with in-dash companies or rear seat entertainment or sensors, lots of interest in sensors right now and big data and analytics. Lots of, uh, lots of information going back and forth, passengers, cars, and networks. So it's a really a melange of machine-to-machine -machine networks, classical telecom, telco operator stuff, and consumer electronics. You know, as the, the car companies give in to the fact that what they are is a moving CE device and not a super sporty zero to 60 engine, um, they're starting to open their eyes to what, what else does that mean for auto? Are the Detroit liaisons for the automobile industry starting to speak the Silicon, uh, Silicon Valley language? I, no, unfortunately, I'd say generally they're a little bit farther behind. They're, they're, they're set with a bunch of, of limitations, right? Number one, safety. They, everything that goes into the car has to be safe. They don't want their customers getting hurt. The transportation authorities around the world don't want it. So they're much more uh, resistant to having new technologies and startups and applications inside the car. Then they want reliability because they, they have to service these cars for 20 years. And then they also want to make sure that whatever technology they're putting in and looking at right now, when the car rolls off the line in four years, it's not already out of date. So lots of reasons for them, the OEMs, to be slow and skeptical. However, they do realize that what they're doing in-house isn't good enough, and they need to be working with the outside innovation community. One final question, Liz. Sure. Who do you think is going to own the ultimate liability associated with self-driving cars in the event, unfortunately, there are accidents? That's a good question. The, right now, the, in the United States, the uh, Transportation and Highway Authority is the one who's kind of taking that on. They're trying to make sure that the connected vehicles are connecting with the road, you're connecting with the other cars. We've seen some technology recently that is, is present aware of people, pedestrians, animals, bicycles, and other big rigs using the information to do drafting to get the cars closer together and fuel economy up, but also for safety to not run into bicycles and whatnot. And that's really right now the, I'd say, the purview of the government. Liz, it's always great to see you. With my pleasure. Thanks, Jeff.